Hi, I'm Jacqueline Stewart, coming to you from the director's inspiration, Spike Lee Gallery, at the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures in Los Angeles. Welcome to Silent Sunday Nights here on Turner Classic Movies. Tonight, our silent feature is the 1923 film, A Woman of Paris, directed, produced, and written by one of the most famous figures of the silent era, Charlie Chaplin. But if you're expecting a comedy centered around Chaplin's iconic Little Tramp character, you're in for a surprise. In the first place, A Woman of Paris is a drama, and second, it doesn't star Charlie Chaplin. He makes only a brief cameo as a railroad porter. Instead, this is a story about a woman from a small French village who's in love with a young artist. When she's jilted by the man she loves, she goes off to Paris where she becomes the companion to a wealthy and notorious bachelor. The woman in the title is played by Edna Purviance, who was one of Charlie Chaplin's favorite leading ladies. Provyance had been working as a secretary in San Francisco when Chaplin discovered her and chose her to star opposite him in the 1915 short, A Night Out. From then on, Edna Provyance worked exclusively for Chaplin, appearing as the object of his affections in more than 30 films between 1915 and 1923. With A Woman of Paris, Chaplin specifically sought out to launch Provyance's career as a solo performer. He wrote the screenplay as a star vehicle for her keeping himself off screen so that she could shine. Unfortunately, the movie did not have the effect that Chaplin and Provyance desired. It failed at the box office, most likely because audiences were expecting the usual Charlie Chaplin comedy. Still, the film benefits from Chaplin's masterful touch as a writer, director, and producer, and it's a fascinating example of a different side of his talents. The cast also includes Clarence Geldart, Carl Miller, and an actor who became an even bigger star once sound came in a few years later, Adolphe Manjou. From 1923, here is A Woman of Paris. Although audiences expecting a typical Charlie Chaplin comedy may not have responded well to A Woman of Paris when it premiered in 1923, the film was a hit in some circles. Adolf Manjou said that working with Charlie Chaplin on this film taught him more about acting than he'd ever learned from any other director. Ernst Lubitsch, who arrived in America the year A Woman of Paris premiered, said that Chaplin's film had a profound influence on the sophisticated romances he would soon direct in Hollywood. Critics were also quick to lavish praise on the film. Robert Sherwood, the future playwright who started out as a critic for the New York Herald wrote, there is more real genius in Chaplin's A Woman of Paris than in any picture I have ever seen. Nevertheless, the film's failure at the box office was a disappointment for Chaplin. After this, he returned to his usual formula, developing a comedy in which he would star as his famous Little Tramp character. The film became one of his masterpieces, The Gold Rush. Up next, I'm turning it over to Alicia Malone for this week's TCM Import. And I'll be back next week when Silent Sunday Nights returns. Until then, I'm Jacqueline Stewart. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Stewart. Thanks for joining me tonight on Turner Classic Movies. It's a night for complicated romance here on Silent Sunday Nights as we bring you a double feature of silent dramas about love triangles. Later tonight, we'll see a film from 1923 written, directed, and produced by Charlie Chaplin, but not starring Chaplin. The movie is A Woman of Paris, a film Chaplin designed as a star vehicle for his frequent leading lady, Edna Purviance. In A Woman of Paris, Purviance is at the center of a doomed love triangle torn between two men, played by Carl Miller, and a young Adolf Manjou. But up first, we have a story about two women in love with the same man, and both of those women are played by another rising star at the beginning of her career, Norma Shearer. From MGM in 1925, it's Lady of the Night. Like a woman of Paris, Lady of the Night was conceived as a vehicle for its leading lady, designed to give her career an important boost. Shearer plays dual roles as two women from opposite sides of the tracks who fall in love with the same man, a young inventor played by Malcolm McGregor. When the film premiered, critics raved about Shearer's performance, 
with the New York Times writing, Miss Shear does the best acting she's ever done. Lady of the Night also turned out to be an important film for another young actress who appears in it, although without any screen credit. If you look carefully, you'll spot a 21-year-old aspiring star named Lucille Lesseur, making her screen debut here in the thankless role of Norma Shearer's body double. In other words, when both characters are shown on screen at the same time, you'll see Lesseur's back to the camera, and in one frame, you'll even see her face in profile. This wouldn't be anything special to note if Lucille Lesseur didn't go on to have a notable career of her own, but she did. By the end of the silent era, she would become another of MGM's top leading ladies, billed under the name Joan Crawford. From 1925, here is Lady of the Night, followed by 1923's A Woman of Paris. of A Woman of Paris was Edna Purviance, who was one of director Charlie Chaplin's favorite leading ladies. Purviance had been working as a secretary in San Francisco when Chaplin discovered her and chose her to star opposite him in the 1915 short, A Night Out. From then on, Purviance worked exclusively for Chaplin, appearing as the object of his affections in more than 30 films between 1915 and 1923. With A Woman of Paris, Chaplin specifically set out to launch Purviance's career as a solo performer. He wrote the screenplay as a star vehicle for her, keeping himself off screen so that she could shine. Unfortunately, the movie did not have the desired effect. It failed at the box office, most likely because audiences were expecting something different, namely a comedy starring Charlie Chaplin. It was a commercial failure and disappointment for Chaplin, and after this, he returned to his usual formula developing a comedy in which he would star as his famous Little Tramp character. That film became one of his masterpieces, The Gold Rush. Up next, it's time for TCM Imports with Alicia Malone. And I'll be back next week when Silent Sunday Nights returns. I'm Jacqueline Stewart. Thanks for watching.